I'm here with the reinforcer, Andrew Anderson, who has had some WCW matches and he's been around on the Indies for 25 years now, close friend of Greg Valentine. First of all, what's going on with your, uh, your reinforcer name? Oh, uh, the reinforcer name, uh, I'm still the reinforcer, but my agents, they trying to break me away because of Gotham and Daredevil and Sneaky Pete and all the TV programs, they want me to try to break away from calling myself the reinforcer and just stick basically as Andrew Anderson. So, you know, they're trying to, you know, so it's, it's good and bad, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with the punches, you know. I'm 50 years old. I've been in this business for 25 years. This April 16th was 25 years. So, so for Gotham, how did you like uh, being on that show? That was amazing, man. One of the best produced shows in the New York area on the East Coast and probably even from the stuff I've done in L.A. It's still just a tremendous production value, great cast, great director. Great, it, it just everything from from the, the the honey wagon all the way to the shoot itself, uh, class act, and I'm honored to be on the show. Considering I've been a comic book geek most of my life, so it's pretty cool. And I'm sure the pay isn't too bad. The pay is nice. The residuals are great. So <laughs> that's a, that's where it comes down to, you know, trying to keep your Screen Actors Guild and SAG after alive, and you know the insurance is great. So I recommend a lot of the boys who are trying to follow and footsteps of acting and you know it's, it's a really good way I mean everybody there's a look out there for for so many movies I encourage guys to go out there and try to market yourself to uh, to to get a role on TV on on film even if it's a documentary if you do a documentary you get noticed look you've been you've been around you know you got one of the hottest podcasts going out there with everything all your interviews so I love your stuff man so good shit Thank you very much. And Greg Valentine is a friend of yours. He's receiving an award at the uh, CAC convention this, this week. Um, how did you become such good friends with him? Well, years ago, I came down for tryouts down at, uh, at WCW. I became friends with Kevin Sullivan. I got really in tight with, uh, with, uh, with Ed Leslie, Brutus Beefcake, he became a longtime friend of mine. Then we didn't see each other in a while. You know, I didn't really work for WCW, but I was down at the power plant training for a while. You know, did some matches. But... Um, Went with Ed Leslie a few times out with Beefer, and we went out, and Greg was there. Greg, was obviously, they were the dream team, so I wound up driving with them for a while. I mean, I knew Greg in passing through uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooker, who trained me, and uh, Greg and I wanted, just wound up clicking. We became friends and, you know, opponents on the road for many years. You know, he became like a father figure. He's still like a father figure to me, and the fact that the CAC is awarding him a men's award, you know, almost like a lifetime achievement award. That's a great honor. You know, I mean, I was there when he got inducted to the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Wichita Falls, Texas. And, uh, you know, Greg's a legend in the business. And he's also like, like I said, he's a great friend, mentor, brother, and father figure to me. Now, being trained by Jimmy Snuka, I've never actually heard of him training anyone. Uh, how was that? That was the first six months of my career. I. Before that, if you want to count, for about three, three, four months before that, I carried his bags everywhere. And he would travel around, and he settled on the East Coast to uh, a place called East Coast Pro Wrestling. And he would get in the ring with me three times a week, hands-on. It was just great. Jimmy was easy, and Jimmy was also very light. When he touched you, you didn't even feel it. So, I mean, he's a, and he was a hell of an athlete. He was a tough guy, you know. He, was, he, was, he wasn't so much shooter tough as in... It'd bite your face off tough, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was just a, a phenomenal athlete. You know, I mean, the stuff he'd done, he was an innovator in the business. So one of the prints of a man. I mean, with accusations and situations aside, at the time of his death, the man was, the man was just, an, he was an angel to me, you know? Never heard a bad thing about him from any of the boys, really. No, that is true, other than some of his uh, crazy partying, but it didn't help him, it didn't hurt him in the ring, I know. No, it didn't hurt him in the ring at all, but he could stay up all night, and sometimes I would try to get him off the bar, and he'd hold on to that bar, and he'd be like, brother, you know who I am, I'm the super fly. And at that moment, you just back off and just hope the hell he doesn't, you know, you know. It was pretty good, it was, it was a fun experience, early on, early 90s. Now, uh, anyone watching this that wants to uh, check you out on social media, where can they find you? Drew the Wrestler on Twitter, Andrew Anderson on Facebook, Andrew the Reinforcer Anderson fan page on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram as, uh, as uh, Andrew Anderson, Reinforcer Andrew Anderson. So they can find me anywhere. So, pretty easy. Any final message you want to uh, tell our viewers to close this off? I think if you're not a member of the Cauliflower Alley Club, I think you should really try 
to sign up, become a lifetime member, or at least become a temporary member. It's a great organization. Give it a chance. Also, come visit the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame out in Wichita Falls, Texas, run by Johnny Mantel. It's another great place, and, uh, you know, everything else is cool. Hannibal, we got to bring you up to Tri-State Wrestling Alliance in New York. All right? Definitely have to bring you in soon. So, that'd be fun.